hi, welcome to the Currently Known As podcast, where we look at the people behind everyday things. And I am your host, Leela. So, on this episode, we will be looking at, um, we'll be looking at Ron Kwasi and the plant that is named after him, the Kosha Amare. So, the kosha amare is a type of plant within the genus of the kosha. So, that's like the grouping. Um, the genus is like a, the grouping within a um, organism family. So, uh, like, um, like um, lions and tigers. Both of those animals are in the group, uh, the panthera, which, um, is a grouping within the larger feline, um, animal family. And, uh, however, like, lions and tigers are two different things, um, but they both share the, share the same genus, the lion being the panthera leo and the tiger being the panthera tigris. Um, so, yeah. The kosha amar, amare plant um, is usually found in south uh, portions of South America. It's like the northern coast. So, places like uh, Guyana, Suriname and parts of Brazil. It's also this plant is also found in Central America, um, like mainly the lower, um, the more southern parts of Central America. Uh, so countries like Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Panama, I believe. Yeah. Um, and so this plant uh, usually grows in tropical areas of the world. So the kosha amare plant is use um for mainly food and medical purposes food wise it is it's usually used um as an additive uh i believe in the form of a powder or um the seeds themselves of the of the um flower uh the flower part of the plant and um this is uh, usually in um, specifically uh, things like bitters. There's a specific bitter in which the uh, kosha amar amari plant is usually used in, and it's escaping me. But I'll add it, like what the name is. Um, so um, a certain type of bitters, and also um, used in uh, beer hops. So that's cool. Um, for utility uh, uses, this plant, the kosha amari, sorry, amari plant, uh, utility-wise, is used as an insecticide. This is uh, because there are chemical compounds that, in certain uh, types of insects, do not like. So that's uh, another use. Uh, the third um, type of use would be uh, and um, would be um, medicine. So this is like what primarily this plant is uh, used for. It has a lot of medicinal properties. Uh, from researching some, were uh, more scientifically backed up than others. So I'm just going to be talking about the ones that seem to be scientifically backed up. Um, so, uh, one of those things is, uh, fighting, um, it's a, it's a anti-parasite, um, that's, like, one of the medical uses, is it fights against, us uh, of uh, uh, parasites, um, this can be, uh, certain types of intestinal parasites, as well as parasites that occur on the hair, uh, which, uh, include, um, the... The insects that, um, that, uh, 
come from head lice and also uh, fleas. So that's uh, one of the medical uses is uh, fighting against uh, certain par parasites. And the second medical use is uh, as an anti-malarial drug from the uh, tree shrub that this is grown on. And they will take that bark and then boil it and make it into a type of um, tea, which will be consumed. Uh, and uh, yeah, this uh, so specifically for anti-malaria, this contains a certain chemical comp compound called the, um, I think they're called quasinoids. And uh, with these chemical compounds, they um, actually help like uh, fight against malaria. And uh, actually, oh, as I'm going to talk about this uh, later on, um, we're seen as a a uh, better option for uh, treating malaria and specifically uh, their the uh, anti uh, fever properties that are present uh, versus the other um, malaria treatments at the time, which had a lot of side effects uh, when using uh it um so now that we have a general overview of uh what the kosha amari plant is i want to go into the man that it is named after graman uh kwasi so let's start with that um so graman kwasi was born kwasim kwasim mukamba in uh, what is now Ghana, and he was born in at around 1690, and at the age of 10, he was kidnapped and taken to the Dutch colony of Suriname, and growing up, he, um, he worked on a sugar plantation there, uh, and uh, also, uh, while growing up, he was very interested in botany and plants. And uh, he actually uh, became known what is called an Obadiah? Obadiah. Obaday. I'm going to put the spelling here. Uh, to I, I'm sorry, I don't know how that is pronounced. Um, but anyway, uh, an Obadiah, that's what I'm calling it. Um, are people that are skilled both in well not people but um yeah people that uh have skills in uh medicine and spirituality uh yes so yeah so he used these skills um and uh to help um treat a uh, fellow enslaved uh, people um specifically and um one of these treatments was him using this type of tonic that came from what is now the uh quasi amari amari plant and he would take this plant uh make it into a type of tonic and this tonic would be used to treat um other uh, enslaved people when there were fever outbreaks in Suriname. Uh, and this specifically, and so this plant was helpful because, um, the chemical compounds in this, uh, then, like, unknown plant, um, had a lot of properties that helped with, uh, fevers, like fever reduction. So, it was, a uh, important to have that if you're having a fever outbreak um so yeah yeah um so also um treating the uh like other um enslaved um people like during these like fever outbreaks with this tonic he also um worked with the european colonizers in Suriname. And, um, working with these, uh, working with these colonizers, um, 
when, you know, there were people at Brixen, they also needed to be, I guess, treated. Um, and he also worked with the Europeans in addition to um, the enslaved people that were uh, also in uh, Suriname. However, working with the Europeans meant that he got money from this. So um, he was like paid for um, uh, treating um, these people and earned like money for the work that he did. And with that, he developed this uh, working like relationship with um, the colonizers there, and I mean like specifically like the Dutch um, people there, and. With that, um, he uh, worked as uh, a spy, more or less an informant, and um, during the um, Maroon rebellions in Suriname, and uh, he, <laughs> sorry, um, my Damien's laugh there, but, um, so yeah, um, Kawasa Mukamba, uh, actually, like, for, um, as, a, an informant, and aided the Dutch in capturing, um, maroon freedom fighters, uh, which, I don't know how to feel about that, it, it's not good, that's what I know, it's not good, um, and so, like, you would work with the Dutch and, like, tell them, like, their, um, locations and stuff, and they would capture, um, these freedom fighters. Um, and because of this, uh, um, this work that Kawasa Makamba did with the Dutch, he was viewed amongst the Maroon, um, people. He was viewed amongst the Maroon people as a traitor, which makes sense. You know, you're working with, like, the people that enslaved you to rat out people trying to fight for their basic, you know, freedoms. I... I think so. So... My camera cut off before I got to finish that sentence, but what I was trying to say was that I definitely understand where the maroon rebels were coming from in terms of why they saw him as a traitor, specifically. Back to the show. On the other hand, like, they're... But on the other hand, like, at this point, um, like, you know, people gotta survive, and Sometimes people take very, um, gotta survive by any means necessary, so I guess there's, like, that angle. I'm not trying to, like, condone, like, what he did as, like, 100% good, but, you know, I don't know. There is, there's that, I guess, to consider. Um, but, anyway. Uh, at this time, during Blossom Akumba's life, he was definitely seeing as um either a healer like according to the europeans but also as a, a traitor according to uh the maroons um so like according to the europeans you know like they like he like worked as um someone who was a healer but also like he not just like as like a you know like a, a like a medical like person but also uh specifically to, um, also worked essentially as, like, an informant on behalf, like, on, um, for the Dutch, uh, and ratting out, um, you know, people, you know, fighting for, you know, their freedoms and, um, fighting against the oppression of, you know, the Dutch crown. Uh, so he was, like, as an asset to the Europeans, really. And then to the Maroons, like, there, um, he was seen as a traitor, in which he was. Because, again, he was not only just, like, working for the Dutch, but 
specifically working to um, help capture, like, you know, um, these enslaved people during um, during uh, the Maroon Rebellion. Um, so there's that. And because of this traitorous action toward the Maroons, they had cut an ear of his off, um, which I, it is what it is, I guess. Um, uh, after the Maroon Wars, I believe it was the Dutch, um, yeah, um, as to being such a faithful asset, you know, for the cause, they gave him a golden breastplate that said, Colossi faithful to the whites, which I, I mean, yeah, I mean, but also at, at what cost, guy, like, I, I don't know how to feel about that personally, um, but yeah, and also at this time, um, because of the work that, um, Kawasa Makumba did with the Dutch. They gave him the nickname of Graman, uh, sorry, of a uh, Graman, which uh, I believe translates to Great Man uh, Kawasi. So that, okay, that happened. I, okay. Um, so, yes. Uh, so yeah, after the Maroon Wars, he, um, Graman Kawasi ended up becoming a personal uh, slave, that feels very icky to say, um, to one of the governors in Suriname. And through this, um, I think it's called manumission, when the owner, usually through like their will, um, grants the... Um, freedom from ownership. Uh, so through that, uh, um, Kwasi became a freed man. So, so yeah, throughout his life, he was working as someone that, um, again, like did a lot of like, um, like medical work with, um, herbs and plants and stuff. And at around the 1730, that sounds right. Um, this is like around the time when, um, what, um, what, like, um, uh, Grumman, uh, Kwasi, like, described, uh, the, the actual, like, medical properties that this plant had. Yes, so, uh, so around the 1730s, um, this was when I believe Grand himself had actually, um, recorded, like, the medical, um, proper, well, one, described this plant, and two, described specifically the medical properties from this plant. Um, and about 30 years, 30 years, uh, later, um, so like 1760, I want to say 1761. Carl Linnaeus uh, heard about uh, this man, Grimon Kwasi, uh, through a, another naturalist. Um, and he was telling Linnaeus about uh, this guy and there is this plant that, you know, he uses and it does wonders for malaria. And so... Linnaeus was like, okay, I'll make a note of that. I'll check it out. And he did. And so, uh, when he went to Suriname, he, like, personally observed, um, Kwasi use this plant, um, against malaria. And he was like, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Because at the time, I, um, they were using Peruvian bark. And this did treat malaria technically but there were a lot of like side effects that went there were a lot of side effects that went 
um, along with this treatment, unfortunately. However, when um, Linnaeus would see uh, people taking this uh, other herb um, that uh, German Kwasi was using, you notice that there were like little to no side effects um, being used. Uh, and he was like, ah, that's interesting. I will make a note of this. And he made a note of it and um, specifically, uh, and so he made a note of it in one of his works. It's escaping me. Yes, Linnaeus uh, observed this and uh, wrote some data about it and it was published in one of his works. Don't remember what it is, um, but where he described this plant and which he named after Grimond Kwasi and called it uh, the uh, Kwasia, uh, or the Kosha plant. And um, yeah, he named this plant after him. And uh, after, you know, this work was published uh, and people knew more about this plant from Suriname, uh, th this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Kosha Amar Amari plant, which um, also I think it's known as like Big man in Spanish. Um, that's like one of the nicknames for it. I don't know why. <laughs> um, this like plant became so popular, and um, this uh, this kosha plant um, that was named after German Kwasi um, actually became Suriname's most popular export. So that's neat. Um, yeah, and. Uh, German Kwasi, like, became, like, well-known and, like, famous for this, but also he became filthy flippin' rich from this. And, and, cause, you know, he, uh, he, he, um, like, discovered this plant, and this plant was very useful for something, um, like malaria, which was, like, a huge deal in the, um, I guess the, um, in internationally around the world uh so yeah um and i don't i want to say this was prior to the time of um like quinine being majorly used i mean this was i think this was the time definitely before like um uh, hydroquinone, which I think is, like, the main, like, use for, um, it's, like, the main thing that is used to treat malaria. This plant, the, uh, Kwasi, um, uh, or the Kosha plant, again, like, I, I, I think the, his name is German Kwasi, but the plant itself, I believe it is pronounced, uh, Kosha, or, um, or koshia. So this herbal plant uh, that was so popular to the point that uh, became Suriname's biggest export, which in turn meant that uh, Graman was very rich from all of this. Um, yeah, he was very uh, rich from all of this. And yeah, and throughout his life, uh, you know, he worked as a botanist and also, like, uh, again, like, he was, um, well-liked by, um, the Dutch. And at around, yeah, at 70 years old, uh, he went to the Hague, with the Hague, which is in the Netherlands, and was honored by the Prince of Orange, um, which is, like, the, um, the, the 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 Dutch uh the the royal um family of the Netherlands and so they gave him this like fancy getup um that they they awarded uh him for they awarded uh Germán Kwasi for his service to the Dutch and they gave him this like fancy getup uh that was in the style of a Dutch general which means that you know um. He was like a very important person to the um, Dutch people, and uh, they greatly um, appreciated his um, services as someone who uh, 
worked in um within the realm of uh botany and like plants and also medicine um but there's also the um I guess also the implication because like this plant became wildly popular it became an export for one of uh the netherlands like like it became the most popular export for a place that was a colony of the netherlands so there's that to consider um and when he returned to suriname at this point he was given this big old house and it was paid off by the Dutch government. He also owned slaves toward the end of his life and profited off of their labor, which I'm glad that, you know, he got his renowned fame as a person important in terms of, um, you know, studying plants and medicine, but Oh no, plantation and you know, slaves. It's a it's not right, honestly. Uh, you know, but it can't be unsaid of um the work that he uh did at the time. But anyway, he died filthy 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 rich in uh eighteen eighteen eighty seven. So, yeah, now that we have the uh, life of Germán Kwasi, I want to kind of go into more of, like, the influence of his life. One, um, oftentimes, uh, there isn't a lot of credit given, um, to people of color in science, and especially, like, throughout history, there have been a lot of things um, that have been used by, you know, people of color. Um, that have been used by, like, people of color and, like, indigenous people and, you know, um, for centuries. And then Europeans come in and they're like, wow, this is, this is a neat plant that's used. Uh, I'm just going to take this plant and pretend that I definitely um, discovered it when... Technically, you didn't really, um, if it's, if, if you're the one that just is, like, stumbling there, like, oh, wow, look at this plant, I, hmm, that's nice, um, and I can, like, you know, like, is it, is it really, you know, proper to be accredited for something that, like, you definitely didn't invent by, especially if it's something that has been used by people for centuries prior to your arrival? I don't know. A thought. Um. But, uh, more importantly, um, Kwasi was, like, uh, you know, um, was, like, unique at the time because, like, as I was saying, uh, a lot of the times, um, things found in nature and things that have been used by, um, like, people of, uh, people of color, uh, and, like, like indigenous people and you know um people that were colonized i guess um is what i'm trying to say uh were um not given like due credit at the time and like linnaeus who was like this very important man in realms of science um actually like named this plant after him which like was not the norm at the time uh, most of the time, like, things, um, like, plants and animals and, uh, they were more or less named for the, um, like, unique traits that they had. Uh, and I guess, like, with plants specifically, I guess that goes with that too. Um, they were named, like, more, um, for the traits that they carried. And, uh, I think it is interesting that fact that this plant is one named after someone, but, um, named after someone and, like, uh, who discovered this plant and, um, this person, like, is also, like, a, was, like, a free, like, black man. And I think that's a, that's a great, that's a great thing for history. Uh, although, you know, there were some not great, you know, sides, uh, 
to him personally. Very interesting fellow. Yeah, I can say that. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's what I got about uh, Grimon Kwasi and the plants that uh, he used and discovered. And um, yeah, um, if you, if you want to find me, uh, you can find me at um, currently known as pod at gmail.com and on the social media at this is Leela. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching, listening. Okay, cool.